I love you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you all. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> well, let me just say how pleased I am to be here. You will be relieved to note that I have no notes with me. Sometimes that's dangerous because it means people blow on too long. But uh, this looks like a festive occasion, and I'll try not to uh, talk too long. But I do stand here with great, great pride and affection for the people up here. We might start with Don Lewis and what he represents, uh, not just because of his great record as governor of Puerto Rico, but his national leadership, outstanding individual. It's been a great inspiration to me. As for Kathy Ortega, I don't know how each of you felt, but when I sat there, I didn't get to go to the arena, but I sat there and watched her with enormous pride as I saw her lay it right out on the line in a way that all American people could understand it. And next to her, my friend Manuel Lujan and I, we've served in Congress together. I see Eddie down here, his brother, our state chairman in New Mexico. We Bushes have to watch out for this Lujan machine next door. It's getting, uh, getting pretty powerful. But uh, Manuel is, as you all know, a leader up there. He's got a, last time they thought he had a tough race, one good, and I'm convinced he'll do the same thing this time. But because of his standing in the Congress, it is absolutely essential, not just to why we're gathered here today with the emphasis on Hispanic affairs and matters, but to our whole leadership in the House of Representatives that be, he be reelected overwhelmingly. So please, you New Mexicans, do your level best to assure that. And as <laughs> Terso and I have worked together for a long time, he's doing a great job leading this organization. Uh, he is indefatigable in his work. Not only was he an outstanding state chairman for the largest, most populous state, uh, but he came across great uh, in his responsibilities now on going across the entire country. And I would be remiss if I didn't say something nice uh, about the commentator for SIN, Spanish International N Network, my son Jeb, who, who along with Terso and Manuel Lujan are getting our message out in Spanish uh, every evening. And I think it's been, from what I hear, it's been very, very effective. And of course, my love and affection for our daughter-in-law, Columba, uh, knows no bounds, so, uh, and I'll, I'll resist telling you about our grandchildren. I did that once, but they, they are absolutely fantastic. I told them up at La Raza meeting that um, I had, I thought that, that in the grandchildren, uh, their son George P. Uh, might really be, uh, if not the first Hispanic president, certainly have the credentials and might make it. Uh, Hispanic American, but the trouble is he wants to be quarterback for the Miami Dolphins, so uh, we're, we're, we're in real trouble in our family. But I really just came over to say thank you for what you're doing. Uh, I get queried as I go around from interview to interview and caucus to caucus about the priority we place on getting Ronald Reagan's message, the Reagan-Bush message, if you will, out to the, uh, out to the Hispanic voter. And some say, well, don't you think because that, that, that you're in difficulty? Don't you think because of matters in Texas along the border and no problems in the border with the peso or Henry Cisneros? They've got a thousand reasons here in Texas why we can't do well. And I say, no, I think we are going to be very, very strong in the Hispanic community because our message is a good, sound, forward-looking, positive message. And, and it really is. And we are... Our strategy, our strategy is not a regional strategy. Ours is a national strategy. And the day we as Republicans turn our back on Hispanic American communities, that's the day we don't deserve to be in office. We're going full bore, all out, and work every inch of the way for the vote. And if we do it right, I'm convinced we're going to get it. Because at least in our state, and you're from 50 states here, and, but in, in our state, why there's been promise after promise after promise by straight lever voting Democrat machine politicians, and it hasn't helped the people a darn bit. 
And so we've got a positive message, and the message isn't just economics. On a matter like neighborhood and crime and quality education in the schools and all these issues. So we're going to take it out across every, country, every county, community, batio, wherever it is, and get the message out. And we are going to surprise the Mondale Ferraro ticket, who has only recently discovered neighborhood. I got to watch Jebby, incidentally. I don't know if you saw him on Good Morning America this day with, with four, four sons and Barbara out there. And I told these guys, that you can tell how they take my instructions. I know you get in there and don't be controversial and uh, keep me out of 1988 politics and get the job done. Just get out there and talk about Ronald Reagan. Next thing I know, I hear Jebby saying, I think my mother ought to debate Mr. Zaccaro. So uh, I... <laughs> You can see who's got the control in our family. But in any event, we're delighted to be here. We are so grateful, gosh, if I could only just go name by name around this room of people that have been in the vineyards working hard early on, uh, not just here in Texas, but in New Mexico, California, Colorado, New York. I can't see it, but, but it's just been, it's, <laughs> I knew I'd get in trouble. but. But really, we're with you, and you have been with us. And let's go forward and win this election, win it big, and let's show them who has the right message, the proper heartbeat for the Hispanic community in this country. It's the Ronald Reagan, and I'd like to add George Bush ticket. We feel strongly about it. Thank you very much. the President of the United States, and Dr. Tirso del Junco. Gentlemen, this week in Dallas we have made history. Attending this convention, there are a record number of Hispanic American delegates and alternates. To be exact, 167. It is my personal pleasure to introduce to you the man most responsible for this historical event and they and we also most responsible for the remarkable growth of the Republican Hispanic American movement in America. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Buenos tardes. Mi bueno amigos, gracias, gracias. This has truly been a convention to remember. I see so many old friends here, and we've shared many memories together. It's great to be here with Terso and Sally Del Junco, with Catherine Ortega, Congressman Manuel Lujan, and Governor Ferre. Having come from California, I wouldn't feel at home unless there was a strong Hispanic flavor to these festivities. <laughs> Hispanic Republicans are an increasingly important part of a Republican coalition. 
and the fact is pretty hard to miss. With Catherine Ortega giving the keynote at this convention, I'm mighty grateful to have her on our Republican team and proud to have her serving as Treasurer of the United States. She's one of a multitude, more than 225, of our appointments of Americans of Hispanic descent throughout our administration. Now, there's a record number of Hispanic delegates at this convention. The other party considers Americans of Hispanic descent a separate interest group. Well, we Republicans see you as representative of the mainstream of our party and of our country. We're, we're not a party of special interests that divides America into camps. We're a party of people who share the same love of country and God, who have the same respect for family and hard work. We're people who appreciate our freedom and are not ashamed to admit that we still feel a stirring inside every time we see the flag waving in the wind. And knowing the strong values that we share, I predict that in the years to come, it is the Republican Party that Americans of Hispanic descent will flock to in ever-increasing numbers. We're a party that will build not bigger bureaucracy in Washington, but an expanding economy throughout our land. We aren't for dependency, but for independence and upward mobility. We're not for handouts. We're not for handouts and welfare. We're for jobs and opportunity. There's been a lot of talk lately about family. Well, I'm glad to see that some on the other side have finally discovered traditional values. We don't wait for election years to proclaim our allegiance to those things that are fundamental to our way of life. Furthermore, we're not just using slogans and empty words. We've got tangible policies to back up our words. We favor a tuition tax credit, for example, to give parents more say in their children's education. Now there, education is an issue that underscores the choice the American people will be making in November. We Republicans call for increasing standards. The liberals are for increasing taxes and spending. We're for restoring discipline to the classroom. The liberals are for... <laughs> the liberals are for increasing taxing and spending. We're for more local control and community cooperation with teachers and schools. Liberals are for more taxes and spending. You tell me who has the better plan for your children's education. The voters, if we help them see beyond the rhetoric, have a real choice in November on this issue and on the issue of crime as well. We Republicans are not just mouthing tough slogans against crime. We've proposed tough legislation to deal with crime, and the liberal leadership of the House has it bottled up in committee. The people deserve to hear from those now touting their commitment to fight crime. How do they feel about the anti-crime package that liberals have held up in the House of Representatives? Republicans say, let's get that bill through the process and start getting more criminals off the streets. The liberals talk about jobs. Yet it was their taxing, spending, regulating, and depleting policies that knocked the wind out of the private sector that provides those jobs. When we Republicans talk about jobs, we don't mean make work, do nothing jobs. It took us time to overcome the mess that we inherited. But our program is working, and so are millions more Americans. In the past 19... <laughs> In the past 19 months, six and a half million people have found jobs, and our recovery is benefiting a cross-section of America. Since it began, for example, more than 575,000 Hispanics have found work. 
but we have an enterprise zones proposal to help people in regions that still haven't benefited from the expansion. Enterprise zones would provide read opportunity and break the bonds of dependency. And if we could elect a few more Republicans to the Congress, maybe we could force the liberal Democratic leadership to permit a vote on that bill. You know, the people vote nationwide and elect a Republican president. They vote a statewide and they vote a majority, they elect a majority of senators. But then when it's broken down into the congressional districts, somehow we seem to keep having a majority of the House, in the House of Representatives of the other party. I think it's time we took a good look at who has been in charge over the years, every 10 years, of laying out those districts. Americans of Hispanic descent, like the rest of us, believe in the dignity of work. There is a, an empty ring when the liberals talk about the work ethic. You can't be the party of high taxes and the champion of the work ethic at the same time. Republicans offer incentives to work, save, and invest. We want people to keep more of their paychecks, to do as they see fit with their money, and the money that they've earned. The liberal big spenders act like Everything belongs to the government, and we should be grateful for what they let us keep. As a matter of fact, it was only a few years ago that they coined an expression they were using over and over again called tax expenditures. And when you interpreted what they were talking about, they were talking about the legitimate deductions that we take in computing our income tax, and they were saying that that was an expenditure of tax money to let you keep your own money for those purposes. Well, we're going to get rid of that term. <laughs> what we who are Republicans want is a strong America. We've been rebuilding our economy, rebuilding our defenses, and yes, rebuilding the American spirit. And that's a job that takes all of us working together. Our most important job now is getting the word out to the people. Each of us, young and old, men and women, Americans who love our country and who come from every religious, ethnic, and cultural background, we have a job to do. And I know that you're already doing so much, and especially the young people. Isn't it grand to see so many wonderful young people at this convention? Now, that was a cue for what I'm going to say next, because one of those young men, Pedro Vargas, from Houston, Texas, was the youngest Hispanic election judge in this state on primary election day last May. He is just 18 years old. And he's... He's a member of the Republican National Hispanic Assembly and is doing his part for the cause. Pedro and all the other fine young people in this country are what this election is all about. And very simply, we want to leave them. Our generation must leave them. An America as strong, as free, and filled with opportunity as the America that we were given when we were young. I, together, <laughs> together we can do just that. And I know that I can count on you. I don't feel like self-conscious or like I'm bragging at all when I talk about what's been accomplished in these last three and a half years because none of us did it by ourselves. If we hadn't been able to turn to you, the people, and if you, had not made some people in Washington not necessarily see the light, but made them feel the heat, <laughs> we wouldn't have accomplished what we've accomplished so far. So, <laughs> so, muchas gracias and vaya con Dios.